One of the most requested topics on the channel recently is for me to talk about the rise and fall of Netflix. I would consider myself a bit of a movie enthusiast, so this is something that's been particularly interesting to me. Plus, when Jason Voorhees asks you to do something, you can't just ignore that. All of these requests are stemming from the fact that Netflix has been having trouble recently, potentially major trouble, to an extent where it has many people questioning the future of the company. The biggest way that this has been reflected is through their stock price. Within six months time, it has dropped from the $700 range to the $200 range, or to express that in a more dramatic way, Netflix has lost over $200 billion in value in less than half a year, with over $50 billion of that disappearing within one day. It became the worst performing stock of the year in the S&P 500, and just overall, not something you want to be a part of at the moment. Like, if for some reason you had celebrated Halloween by buying a bunch of Netflix stock right around their all-time high, you may be panicking right now. Maybe that's why Jason is so concerned with it. That's silly. And the main reason the investors have lost so much confidence in Netflix is because they've been having trouble growing their subscriber base. In fact, for the first time in over a decade, their quarterly report stated that they had lost subscribers, 200,000 of them over that quarter, and they predict potentially another 2 million of them in the next quarter. These are definitely things that I will be talking about in more detail here. There has been seemingly so much happening in such a short period of time. Back in December of 2020, I actually made a video talking about why Netflix was so successful, and at at that time, I would have never thought I'd be making this video about their potential downfall so soon after. Oh my goodness, that first video almost entirely focuses on how they grew their original business of renting DVDs through the mail. You may remember that at one point, they were essentially an online version of Blockbuster. To summarize some of the main points from that original video, Netflix was an early adopter of DVDs themselves. It was impractical to send VHSs through the mail, so the introduction and rising popularity of DVDs in the late 1990s allowed them to exist in the first first place. They were also very focused on the long term, sacrificing early profits to grow a bigger customer base and establish a more stable business overall. A part of that involved spending crazy amounts of money on marketing to those potential customers. And they used technology to generate recommendations that were considered to be far more sophisticated and personalized than what the employee at Blockbuster was recommending. It is strange to think how those two were famously considered to be direct competitors at one point, but all of those efforts, among many others, helped build Netflix to over 6 million subscribers and 1 billion billion dollars in revenue before they ever streamed anything. Netflix has existed for 24 full years, 1998 through 2021. The first 12 were mostly concerned with the DVDs, while the next 12 were more concerned with streaming. So I see this as the perfect opportunity to pick up where I left off on the last one and talk about what has been happening during their streaming years. It was a slow start. The first ever Netflix streaming of any kind was announced in 2004. There was a lot of excitement going around after they announced that they would be joining forces with the DVR company TiVo to provide a revolutionary new service that would allow you to access movies over the internet straight to your television. TiVo was going to develop those set-top boxes while Netflix was going to secure the rights to show the movies and TV shows, a plan that may have been too ambitious because it didn't work out. Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix, later called it overly optimistic because they had trouble getting the licenses and then TiVo had trouble making the technology work. Overall, it was a big disappointment. The first true Netflix streaming didn't occur until 2007 when they introduced their online platform called Watch Now. Again, maybe a bit of a disappointment in some ways. It had a comparatively limited selection of 5,000 titles compared to the 85,000 that were available through the DVD rentals. But it was meant to be more of a compliment anyway, like a little something extra for their subscribers, with the DVDs still being the main attraction. The following year, they made a deal with Roku where for $99, they would sell these boxes where you could access Netflix by connecting them to your television. By this time, the library of titles had doubled and it was starting to become more attractive to the customers. Over the next few years, they worked toward making it more accessible by creating deals with TiVo, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, Apple to make it possible to access Netflix through their devices. By 2010, streaming had surpassed their DVD rentals and they recognized that moving forward, streaming would be their main focus and the DVDs would be secondary. Obviously, over time, DVDs have become less and less significant to a point where today they account for less than 1% 
percent of their total revenue. I do want to point out that this is not the first time that Netflix has run into some major trouble. Their transition from DVDs into streaming was arguably worse than what they're facing today in that it led to upset customers, a drop in subscribers, and a dramatic decline in their stock price. See, to start 2011, Netflix was charging $10 a month to rent one DVD at a time and to stream everything over the internet, all together as one price. Then in July of that year, they announced that they would be separating it into $8 a month for the DVD and $8 a month for the streaming, technically a price reduction if you only wanted one of the services, but a sizable increase if you wanted to stick with both. Their customers generally wanted both and saw the increase as being unreasonable. Here's where it gets really bad. Two months later, CEO Reed Hastings put out what appeared to be an apology letter. It started by saying, I messed up, I owe everyone an explanation, but by the end of it, he announced that the two services would become even more separate with different billing and different names. The streaming service would continue to be called Netflix, but the DVD rental service would be renamed Quickster with a weird spelling. The whole thing was almost unanimously confusing and disliked. They made a funny sketch about it on SNL where it keeps getting more and more ridiculous that I highly recommend. The whole response was so negative that they gave up on the whole Quickster thing not even a month later. But within those few months, they had lost 800,000 subscribers, their stock price was reduced to about a fourth of where it was, and it took two years to fully get back to that point. Again, when looking back at it, Hastings admitted to being overly confident and moving too quickly. Probably one of the biggest reasons behind that recovery and their overall success in recent times would be their original content. This right here is what I find so impressive. Netflix was able to transition from renting the content into making the content. It's like if GameStop became one of the world's leading video game makers. In 2013, they debuted House of Cards, the first major TV show to be shown exclusively on a streaming service, and have since been responsible for some of the biggest movies and TV shows of our time, many of which have been recognized at the Emmys and the Oscars and all of the other award shows. I should also mention their international expansion is playing a big part. It was around that time that Netflix was first available in Europe, and they've since been aggressively making it available throughout the rest of the world. There are currently Netflix members in 190 different countries. That was my overview of the rise of the legendary Netflix streaming service. So now I want to talk about some of the potential reasons behind their potential fall. First off, I know that a lot of the reports out there are making things look really bad with these juicy headlines, and I agree that these are concerning times for them, but I want to take a look at a few external factors outside of their control that suggest this may be more of an unlucky short-term setback. Inflation is another one of the bigger stories. It's been really high lately, and when people are tight on money, they are likely to cut costs by eliminating unnecessary expenses like streaming subscriptions. Probably not one of the biggest reasons, but potentially contributing to the loss in subscribers. Another external factor would be Russia. They suspended their service in the country in protest of what's happening in Ukraine. Again, not major, but it did cost them 700,000 subscribers, meaning they otherwise would have reported an increase. But what I think is a bigger factor would be the pandemic. When everyone was locked down, stuck at home, do you know how many people were just sitting around watching Netflix? They saw a major increase in subscribers. The big story is that they lost 200,000 in a quarter, but combining the two years prior, they had gained over 54 million. We can theorize that people subscribed when there was nothing else to do, and now that they're back outside living their life, they don't need that subscription anymore. There's a lot of ways to look at this, but maybe they started growing artificially fast, and these recent numbers are working to even things out. But let's get to the deeper issues. Competition, maybe the most obvious one. I think we've all seen how competitive things have gotten. Streaming in general has been seen as a huge market and everyone has been racing to be a part of it. Netflix does remain the biggest streaming service out there, but there are so many choices now. How many of you have subscribed to something new within the last three years? Some of the new ones over that time are Disney+, Plus, Paramount+, Plus, and HBO Max, which is part of Warner. All of them are backed by major movie and TV studios that have been putting out content for about a century. When Keep in mind, Netflix started in 2013. It's hard to compete with that. It's forced Netflix to raise their spending on content well into the billions. They create their own stuff and license stuff from other companies. But those other companies are the ones behind the other streaming services, many of which now want to keep their content on their own service. It's hard to guess exactly where it's all headed, but the stronger competition certainly doesn't seem good for Netflix. And that leads me to the next potential reason, pricing. Just take a look at their Quickster fiasco to see how touchy pricing can be. Remember, that's when they established their streaming price at $8 a month, and that has almost doubled since then, with the biggest increases happening since 2019. Of course, there are other variables to consider, such as the competition and the extra money they've been putting into their content, but back in 2011, everyone freaked out when it was
was $16 a month for streaming and DVDs, and today it's $15.49 for just streaming. And that can relate back to the inflation. If you're going to cut out a streaming service, it might be smart to cut out the most expensive one. Or even if you're not having money troubles, you might just think that it's not worth it. I'm just saying, they're setting the bar high, and they had better be offering some great content for that price. A possible solution to all of this would be introducing an ad-supported, cheaper option, similar to what many of the competitors are already offering. I don't know, Netflix has always been known for not having commercials, and I think they benefited quite a bit from it, but then it might be a smart trade-off. And they have announced intentions of doing something like this within the next few years. Finally, the biggest reason that the company seems to think is behind their trouble is password sharing, potentially because it's something that they have more control over. You know, it's the thing where you give your password to your friend or family member who you don't live with and they can access your account. It's explicitly against their terms of service, but they have done very little to prevent it. You know, when we were growing fast, it wasn't the high priority to uh, work on. I think they do see benefits from it when someone uses someone else's account for a while. I imagine they're likely to get their own account eventually, but holy cow. They estimate that 100 million households are doing this, 30 million of which are in the US or Canada. Doing some quick math would suggest that one in five households in those countries are watching Netflix without paying for it. They say that they see it as an opportunity because they can improve their numbers if they simply figure out a pricing strategy that would make those people pay for it. It. Uh, we just got to get paid, you know, at some degree for them. They have been testing some ways to address it in select countries where they have these sub accounts. You can add extra member accounts for a few extra dollars a month. It's unclear exactly what's going to happen with it, but I imagine if they continue to struggle, something along these lines will be incorporated into their pricing. But as we keep seeing, the pricing can be touchy, so I doubt they're going to rush into it. Let me know in the comments, what do you see for the future of Netflix? Are they going to figure out a way past these issues like they've done in the past and remain the most popular streaming service, or are they going to get lost in the shuffle and maybe ultimately decline all the way down? That wouldn't be my guess at the moment, but these are questionable times. Also, do you agree with my reasons behind their potential decline, or do you think there's more to it? It's been debated that politics and scandals may be contributing factors, maybe you're critical of the content itself, which kind of relates to the pricing. Why do you think Netflix is running into so much trouble again after such an impressive 10-year streak? And finally, I want to know, what do you think is the best streaming? service. If you could only subscribe to one of them, which one would it be and why? And any other thoughts you have about Netflix, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.